Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering a beginner's guide to Mac. And specifically, this is gonna be geared towards people that are transitioning from Windows to Mac. So we're just gonna cover a lot of the basics and how to navigate, how to quit applications, how to customize some of your settings, and so on. Now before we get started, if you're interested in genuine Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll have all the links in the description box below. So without further ado, let's begin today's video. All right, so when you first log into your account on the Mac, you're gonna open it up straight to what's called the desktop. So very similar to Windows, we have a desktop, a dock, and then various settings and tools throughout the rest of the screen. So one of the very first things that you'll find yourself going back to all the time is the Apple menu. So very top left, this is always gonna be here. And we have some various options that we're probably gonna update pretty frequently. So the first one about this Mac, this is gonna tell me some basic computer specs as well as what version of Mac OS I'm actually running. We can click over to displays and storage. And this storage area will give us a directory that we can use to optimize disk on our hard space. So just like Windows, the desktop is a place where we can do file organizing, file management. We can store different things in our dock or on the desktop itself. Now going back to the Apple menu, we can actually sleep, shut down, or restart from here. And we also have a force quit menu. So in case you ever want to force quit an application that's unresponsive, that would be where you go to do that. Now, if I pull up any window, similar to Windows, we have a close option right here. We have minimize and then we have full screen. So by clicking each one of these, I can enter full screen. I can minimize the window, bring it back by clicking the icon or I can X out of it. Now, another thing that's right here on our desktop that you might want to commonly use is called the spotlight. So it's this little search icon towards the top right of the screen. You see it says spotlight search. This is essentially allowing me to search my entire Mac by file name. So for example, I could search for any applications. I could search for Safari. I could search for my downloads folder. If you don't know where something is that you're trying to get to, Spotlight is always a good option to keep in mind. You can also bring that up by holding command and pressing the spacebar. Now moving down to our dock, by default, you're gonna have Finder, Safari, and you'll have probably have music and a couple of other things. On Mac, it's very easy to customize this. Uh, if I bring up my Finder and applications, by dragging and dropping any of these applications in my dock, they will remain there until I remove them. And if I wanna remove something, I just click and drag to release. Okay, and then another way to do that is that you can see I have some applications open here. If I right click on this and hover over options, I can keep this in my dock. Now it's gonna be a part of my permanent dock. And alternatively, I can uncheck keep in dock and then when I quit out of this, it's no longer gonna be in my dock. Now, if you wanna customize your dock a little bit more, we're gonna go back to our Apple menu and we're gonna pull up system preferences. This is kind of like your control panel on Windows. It's gonna have a lot of the system settings and basic settings that you're gonna use on a consistent basis. <clears throat> so we'll start in the dock and menu bar section. So we have some options for the menu bar. We can change the size or magnification of the dock. We can also position it various places across our desktop. Now going back into the main system preferences, this is probably a place you're going to want to get familiar with. Uh, we have Bluetooth settings. We have network settings to do Wi-Fi or ethernet connections. We've got printers, battery, date and time. We have our startup disk privacy and security. So tons of settings here that you're probably gonna to wanna to configure based on exactly what you need. Now, if you look under each application, you can see this tiny little dot. This just tells me that it's running. So I can X out of it and then it'll stop running. Or I can always right click on the application and press quit. Now, a third way to quit out of these applications is to click on the application title in this tab at the top left when you have it open. All the way down, you can press quit or press command Q. Now, very similar to Windows, by right-clicking on an application or folder, I have a ton of different options about what I wanna do. So clicking into my settings, I can right-click and immediately pull up any one of these little categories here. Now, in some cases, you may not have right-click enabled. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna go to trackpad. If you were here, again, that's just trackpad in my system preferences. And secondary click is gonna give me that right-click option for the trackpad. Now, when it comes to downloading and installing applications, there are a couple of easy ways to do that. So from our start menu, we can pull up our app store. And these are all gonna be Apple approved 
applications. So you don't really have to worry about malicious activity. You can download a lot of very popular applications right here from the App Store. And for example, you can see it's pulling up Keynote and Pages. Keynote and Pages are Apple's equivalent of PowerPoint and Word. So Apple has its own equivalent suite to Microsoft Office, and you can use those by default as soon as you set up your Mac computer. I still prefer to use Microsoft Office, which they have a Mac installable version. It's good to know nonetheless. Now let's quickly go over Finder. So Finder is essentially File Explorer if you're used to that on Windows. It's gonna be a general directory for navigating files, uninstalling, removing, or pulling up your downloaded files. So by default, you're gonna have some categories here. We have um, applications. It's gonna have all of our properly installed applications. And then we have documents and downloads. Again, these are just default directories that you can go to to search for specific files. Now, again, we can customize this just like a lot of the other things. If I hover over Finder in the top left and click Preferences, you'll find preferences in every application that you have. Generally speaking, you can edit something within that application. Here we have some options about what different folders go in our sidebar. We have advanced options and general options. So in case you want a specific folder to be in your Finder, to be easy to find, that's how you can do that. Now, just like on Windows, if I right click on an empty space on my desktop, I could create a new folder if I want for organization. And then by clicking on it and pressing the enter key, I can rename it. Can also rename by right clicking and pressing rename. And now of course we have a bunch of various different options here. We can add color tags. And another thing we can do is move to trash. So this is gonna be the most common and easy way to delete something on Mac. And by default, the trash is gonna be all the way to the right on your dock. By opening it, I could recover something that I deleted by mistake. Or if you wanna permanently delete it, we can right click on the trash and click empty trash. And then we'll press confirm. And now that folder that we made is gone. Now back in our finder, like I said, we have a various different ways to search or browse through our files. So we have four options for how we can view files. And then this little button right here will actually give me some options to filter for specific preferences. Now another handy tip for a new Mac user is that let's say I have multiple pages of Safari open, right? So I have multiple windows open. And this one, for example, is on YouTube and I have both of them minimized and I don't wanna bring up a bunch of different windows. You can right click here and it's gonna give you like a little abbreviation or preview of what the window was. You can see the one that says YouTube will pull up the window that I had YouTube pulled up on. So nice little tip there for easily pulling up your minimized windows. Now back in our finder, we're gonna show you guys what the home folder does and what it looks like and how to get there. So in finder under go, I'm gonna click on home. Now home is essentially a collection of my personal files. I'll have all my downloads. I'll have what's on my desktop. I'll have my applications. So the spotlight search and the home folder are two of the best places to find what you're looking for if you're not sure where it is. All right, and the last thing that we're gonna cover today is Safari. We're just gonna go over it very quickly. Safari is Apple's default browser. Generally speaking, it's actually faster on Mac and it's gonna use less memory than Chrome or Firefox or something like that. So personally, I use Safari. I like Chrome better, but Safari just works well with Mac. And it's very similar to Microsoft Edge. At the top, we can type in our web address. We can create new pages. And then we just have all of those basic browser functions. Again, we have preferences underneath Safari. So here we can control our extensions, privacy, and other basic settings. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you guys found it helpful, we'd really appreciate a like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you have any questions for us, drop those in the comment section below. Again, if you're interested in genuine Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll have all those links in the description box below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.